Hi everyone, welcome to this lesson where today we're talking about how to graph inequalities on the coordinate plane in two variables. This is a little different from graphing inequalities on a number line. However, we are going to notice some similarities about what would have been an open circle on a coordinate plane, what would have been a closed circle on the coordinate plane, and things like that, and how we shade. Let's take a look. So first we're going to start off with two really basic inequalities y is less than x and y is greater than x. Now what I want you to think about is the fact that if I had a less than symbol or I had a greater than symbol here, these would have both been on a number line. Those symbols would have had us do an open circle, right, for both of them. But when we go to graph, an open circle is not something that we can do on a graph. So instead of a solid line, what we do is we actually create a dashed line. So we're not there just yet for graphing, but this is what I want to start out with, is instead of an open circle on a number line on the coordinate plane, we represent that using a dashed line instead of a solid. So now if I was to graph y is less than x, I'm going to just pretend for a moment like it says y equals x. And so we would then know that, okay, I've got a y-intercept at 0, I have a slope of 1, and I would go ahead and plot my points. But then here's where I stop for a moment. Okay, I stop and I look back at the inequality symbol and the inequality is less than, which is going to tell me to make not a solid line, don't connect those points, but actually make a dashed line through them. Okay, this is what this graph would actually look like. Y is less than X. Now remember, if you were graphing something on a number line, you would either figure out is it an open circle or a closed circle, and then you'd have to figure out which direction to shade. Well, this is going to be pretty simple. This says y is less than x, okay? The inequality says y is less than. So that means we need to look at the y-axis. Where do y values get less? Do they get less at the top of the y-axis or do they get less at the bottom of the y-axis? This is where y values get less. So here's what this is going to mean now. This means that in sh instead of like shading on the number line, we actually go ahead and we shade in on the graph. And so look, the side of the y-axis that I circled down here, this is the entire side of that dashed line that I actually shaded, all the way up to the dashed line. Now, remember what a open circle would have meant on a number line. An open circle means that's where the solutions start, but then that number isn't actually part of the solution if it's in the open circle. The same thing's going to apply for a dashed line. So if I say to you, circle the solutions to the system, negative 3, 2 is up here. It's definitely not in the shaded region, so negative 3, 2 is not in the system. 0, 0. 0, 0 is right here at the origin, and it's on the dashed line. And if something's on the dashed line, it's just like it being on the number line with the open circle. That's also not a solution. However, 2, 1 is right here. And 2, 1 is definitely in the shaded region. Let's take a look at the next one. Y is greater than X. So Y is greater than X still has a Y-intercept at 0, a slope of 1, Remember, you start graphing it as if it's an equation. I stop, I look at the inequality symbol. Greater than would have been an open circle on a number line. So on a coordinate plane, it is still going to be a dashed line. That's how we represent like the open circle. So now I'm going to go ahead and look at the inequality. This inequality says y is greater. So that means we look at the y-axis and we say to ourselves, where does the y-axis get greater? It gets greater at the top. So now when I want to go ahead and shade in the region of all the values where y is greater than x, this is the side of the graph that I would shade in. So whatever side I follow the inequality by, wherever it says it's greater, that's the side of the graph you shade all the way. And notice I extend through all the quadrants here, okay, all the way across that dashed line. So then if I want to now answer negative 3, 2, that's definitely in the shaded region, Zero, zero is on the dashed line, not part of the solution. And two, one is here, definitely not in the solution. Okay, so I hope that you felt feel like you went along with that pretty easily. Now let's take a look at the second half of things. So now, if this was a number line 
and you had a less than or equal to symbol, we know that would have been a closed circle on a number line, which actually means it's going to just be our classic solid line. Okay, so those are the options, dashed or solid, and solid is just what we've been so used to at this whole point. So if I go to graph this line now, um, y-intercept of 0, slope of 1, I can now connect them with a solid. And then remember, we look at the inequality. So the inequality here says y is less than or equal to. Well, down here is where y gets less than. So that's the side of the graph that I go ahead and shade. And I shade it the whole way up until that line because that's where y gets less. Now, if I want to go ahead and circle the inequalities that are part of the solution, well, negative 3, 2 is up here. No. But now look at 0, 0. 0, 0 is on the solid line. And we remember when we had a number line, if the number was in the closed circle, it was part of the solution. So now if a point is on the solid line, it is part of the solution. And so that's good. And then 2, 1 is part of our solution. Awesome. So now here, y is greater than or equal to x. So what we're noticing here, guys, is that um, we're now realizing when we use a solid line, when we use a dashed line, so solid is always when we have the equal to part. Okay, that's like a big um, thing to look at. This is now saying y is greater than or equal to. Well, up here, this is where y values get greater. So that's going to be the side of the graph that I'm going to shade in. And then I'm going to go ahead and answer this question, circle the solution. So negative 3, 2 is definitely in the solution set. 0, 0 we know is directly on the line. And of course, 2, 1 is not in the shaded region. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at just some more inequalities. Same kind of practice, just better skill, um, more situations going on. So y is less than uh, 3x minus 2. So I would plot a y-intercept at negative 2, a slope of 3. I check the inequality. It says less than. Less than is a dashed line. Now it says I need to shade in where y is less than. So look at the y-axis. Where does a y-axis get less? As you go up or as you go down? It definitely gets less down here. And so then that's the side of the graph I will shade. You're going to see I'm just so consistent with my explanation on this. And usually when I'm in class with my students explaining this, I feel like my success uh, with my students and understanding this process of how to know which side to shade just really becomes so second nature. So negative 3, 2, no. 0, 0, no. 1, 4, no. 2, negative 5, yes. This 2, negative 5 is down here. 0, negative 2 is actually on the dashed line, so no. Negative 4, negative 2, no. 2, 2 is here, so that's good. Negative 2, 3, definitely not. And 3, 0. Those are definitely in the solution. Next one, y-intercept of positive 4, slope of negative 2 thirds. I look at the inequality. It's a less than, which again means it's going to be dashed. It says y is less than, so I look at the y-axis. Where does the y-axis get less? It gets less at the bottom here. So now that is the side of this entire graph that I shade in. All of these coordinate points here are part of the solution, except for points, of course, on the dashed line. So now negative 3, 2 is here. That's good. 0, 0, good. 1, 4 is up there. No good. 2, negative 5 is good. It's down here. 0, negative 2 is good. Negative 4, negative 2 is good. 2, 2 just makes it. Negative 2, 3 is good. And 3, 0 is good. So look, only one of those ordered pairs actually did not work. Okay, so now less than or equal to. So again, we plot the y-intercept, we plot our slope. But now when we look at the symbol, it's less than or equal to. So that's going to mean it's that solid line. Okay, the moment you have the equal to part of the inequality, that's when it's a solid line. And now look at saying y is still less than or equal. Well, y gets less down here. Look where the arrow is. So that's the side of the graph that I would shade in. 
And then remember, if a point's on the solid line, it is going to be part of the solution. It's going to be good. So negative 3, 2. Look, it's right on the solid line right here. So that one's good. 0, 0, no. 1, 4, no. 2, negative 5, nope. 0, negative 2, no. Negative 4, negative 2 is down here. That's good. 2, 2, no. Negative 2, 3, nope. And 3, 0, nope. Okay, this one here now. So it's in standard form. We could rearrange it, put it into slope intercept form. I personally prefer intercepts. So if I wanna find the x intercept, remember that would be you cross out the three y. So it's two x equals six. So x is three. And then if I wanna find the y intercept, I would basically cross out the two x. Three y is equal to six. So that means y is two. And then I can see my slope is happening here. It's actually a slope of negative two thirds. Um, I can connect those points. And then it says y is less than or equal to. So this is where y is less than or equal to, equal to there. And then remember that means this is the entire side of the graph that we shade in. I think you get the point now um, about where we are shading in. So now negative 3, 2 is good. 0, 0 is good. 1, 4 is not. 2, negative 5 is definitely in there down here. 0, negative 2 is good. Negative 4, negative 2 is good. 2, 2 is not. Negative 2, 3 just makes it. And then 3, 0 is on the line, which is good. Okay, so I've got four last problems here for you. Now we're going to greater than. So y is greater than negative four. So remember, if it said y equals negative four, that would mean you would go to the y-axis at negative four, and then it's a horizontal line. So before I draw a line, remember we look at the symbol, it's greater. Greater means it's going to be a dashed line. And then we still take a look and say, well, where, is y, where does y get greater? Y gets greater at the top. So then this is the entire part of the graph that we shade in. Okay, and then I'm looking at my ordered pairs. So I could go through these ordered pairs really methodically, or I could just be like, I'm gonna look at the ordered pairs, and as long as the y value is greater than negative four, it's in the solution. So look at this, negative three, two, right? Zero, zero, one, four. What we actually care about are all of the ordered pairs where the y value is greater than negative four. So look, two negative five is down here. That's definitely not going to be it. And that's actually the only ordered pair that doesn't meet the requirements. So that's an easy way to do it. Y is greater than negative x minus two. So a y intercept of negative two, a slope of negative one. I look at the inequality, it's greater. So that means it's gonna be a dashed line. Sorry for me shaking my screen as I draw on it. Um, here is where y gets greater, right? Y gets greater, so that means we are shading the graph on this side. Okay, let's take a look at the ordered pairs. So negative three, two sneaks in. Zero, zero is good. One, four is definitely good. Two, negative five, is definitely right below it, does not make it in. Zero, negative two is on the dashed line. Remember, if it's on the dashed line, it's not part of the solution. Negative four, two is definitely not in the shaded. Two, two, it definitely is up here. Negative two, three is definitely in the shaded. And then three, zero is definitely in the shaded. Okay, last two problems. Um, so y-intercept of negative one, a slope of three over two. I look at the inequality symbol, it says greater than or equal to, which we know means a solid line. It says y is greater than, here's where the y-axis gets greater. And so that's the side of the graph that we shade. Take a look at these ordered pairs now. So negative three, two is good. Zero, zero just squeaked in. 1, 4 is definitely good. 2, negative 5, no way. 0, negative 2, definitely not. Negative 4, negative 2 is good. 2, 2 is right on the line, which is good. Negative 2, 3 is good. 
and three zero is not good. Definitely not there. Okay, last one. So this one is just a slight difference because now it's just X. Notice there's no Y, no Y. So everything's gonna revolve around the X axis for this last one. So if it said X is equal to negative two, that would mean on the X axis, I would go to negative two and I would make a vertical line. It is greater than or equal to, so that means it is going to be a solid line. And then instead of focusing on the Y axis, we focus on the X. So then I would ask you on the X axis, where do values get greater? Do they get greater to the right or do they get greater to the left? This is the side where X values definitely get greater, right? This is the side of the X axis where X values get less. They get smaller on that side. So that means that I would shade this entire side and just like we kind of did the other trick of really just looking at the ordered pairs, as long as the X value is a number that's greater than or equal to negative two, it's part of the solution. So look, negative three, two, that X value is less than negative two. It's, so it's definitely not there. And look where it is. It's, it's right there, right? Um, zero, zero is good. One, four is good. Two, negative five is good. Zero, negative two is good. Negative four, negative two. No, because that X value is not greater than negative two. And negative four, negative two is out here. Two, two is good. Negative two, three, remember, will be right on the line, the solid line, which is good. And then three, zero, of course, is good. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.